This video is sponsored by Established Titles. This is the Celtic Slammer, and I know a lot of you may disagree about why one might go about making one of these, but I made one purely for the crafting aspect of it. There really is a sense of satisfaction putting in the time and effort to make something and see it to come to fruition. So they may take my paracord, they may take my steel balls, but they will never take our freedom. In all seriousness though, here's how to make the Celtic Slammer. Let's go. In terms of paracord, I'm using brown as my main color with red and blue for my secondary colors on the wrist lanyard portion. Also a 1.5 inch steel ball for the core. To get started, I'm going to begin working about five feet in from the left side of my cord and make an overhand loop. Then with the right side of the cord, I'm going to lay that piece on top of the loop we just made. From there, working with the same right cord, I'm going to move that cord to the left, behind the left cord, and wrap it around the front. And then from there, I'm going to go in through the first lobe, and then under and over the two strands in the middle, and through the last lobe on the right. Pull the excess through, and here is where we should be at this point. So that was actually the hard part. This next part, though it may look difficult, is actually very easy and intuitive. I'm going to take this piece now and place it over my steel ball and do my best to center the wrap around the middle of the ball. You also want to tighten up this initial wrap. Just firm it up slightly and no need to get it super tight. And do your best to keep it right in the middle. Next, I'm going to place a lacing needle on the right side strand. And now look closely here. You see this area where both my strands are on the opposite sides of the ball? If I tilt the piece to the right, you can see where the opposite strand exits the wrap. With the strand on the lacing needle, you want to follow this strand and stay on the right side of it. Have the lacing needle go under the cord on top and then pull all your excess through. From there, all you have to do is continue following the same strand all the way around. It's a very intuitive process and just follow and trace the strand. If you have any issues pulling the cord through and it's getting twisted or tangled, just untwist the cord as you're pulling it through. Using your index and thumb, you can very easily untwist as you pull. If you can connect the dots on one of those connect the dot pictures, you can definitely do this part. I can't stress enough how easy it is. Now, if you need a longer drawn out demonstration of this wrapping, I have an older video for that and I will have it linked. You're just following the same path over and over and you're staying on the right of the previous pass you just did. So make your way all the way around and this is what two passes should look like. So you can see where I'm going with this. To continue, you're going to repeat the process for a total of a six strand pass or six laps around the ball. The main key here is after each pass, double check to make sure your wrap is still centered in the middle. If it's a little off, just push and work the ball to the opposite side it's favoring. Just go slow and intentional, no need to rush. Now I'm not going to show you the entire process because that would be painfully tedious, but trust me, once you get going, it's super easy. So once you've done six passes correctly, this is how the terminal ends or running ends should look. From here, you want to double check your ends so that you have just about equal amounts of cord on both sides. If one is longer, you can pull some cord through the wraps to the other side. This process will also tighten up the wraps and solidify the entire piece. So just even up the cords and work the slack all the way through using a fid or spike can help and for sure save your fingers. And if you have any excess slack in the wraps, use your spike, fid, or just your fingers and tighten up the entire wrap. With that done, if you look closely here, one running end is off to the side and the other is closer to the middle. To fix that, I'm again going to use my lacing needle and have the end on the side go under the set of passes it's closest to so that it ends up closer to the middle. Now next, the knot that trips people up, the diamond knot. I'm gonna jog through this section to save some time as I have a dedicated tutorial for that. But make a loop with the right strand and lay it over the left strand. 
Move the left strand under the right strand to the right, and then pass it under the standing end under the loop. Then both cords move counterclockwise past the standing ends and then through the middle opening to form the diamond knot. From here, cinch the diamond knot all the way to the steel ball. Now here, I'm just working the slack in between the diamond knot and the wrapped ball out the running ends. And now it's time to weave our lanyard handle. This pattern is most fittingly the Celtic bar, and I'm going to take both my accent colors and place the midpoint in between the two brown cords. From there, I'm going to cross over my brown strands. The right goes over the left and then separate them to their sides. Then working with them as a pair, I'm going to bring the left red and blue pair over the brown strand on the left and to the middle followed by the right red and blue pair that goes under the right brown cord and over the opposite left pair. Firm that first weave up slightly, and if you look closely here, I'm intentionally leaving a small gap just below the diamond knot. I'm gonna need that later, and the gap is about half an inch or two centimeters. From here, we continue weaving our Celtic bar back to the start, cross over the brown strands, right over left and the left side goes over the left pair and the right side goes under the right pair then repeat over and over and weave the celtic bar so you can see this pattern is very simple as well just crossing over the strands or pairs of the strands and the left side always goes over the outer left side cords while the right side goes under the right side cords now I wove my Celtic bar for about 27 inches or about 68 centimeters. And to lock off our cords at the end, I'm going to use the Cobra knot. The right side brown strand goes over the crossed over red and blue strands. The left brown strand goes over the right brown strand behind the piece and then out the crook on the right. Pull tight and repeat again. The now left side goes over the front and under the right brown cord. Right goes behind and then out the left crook. Pull tight and we've secured our strands. Next, I'm going to cut off my excess red and blue strands, melt them with my lighter and press down on the ends. Now, if you look closely at the Celtic bar, there is a front and back side. The front just looks better than the back. So whichever the presentation side is, fold the strap over and have it facing outwards. After folding it over, I'm going to align the end with the little gap I left just above the diamond knot from before. To join the lanyard, I'm now going to tie some cobra knots over the two strands where the gap is. Right strand goes over the two core strands and under the left. The left goes behind and out the right crook. Repeat two more times, keeping the lead strand on the front for a total of three cobra knots or enough to cover the gap section. Now from there, we can snip off and melt the excess brown strands. And I'm also going to take a Sharpie and color in the little white dot at the melted end to make it look a lot better. Now, if you don't want the Sharpie to rub off, you can also take your lighter to the melted end just for a little bit, and it helps that Sharpie bind to the paracord. And there we have it, Weavers, the new and upgraded Celtic Slammer. I love how this piece looks and it's quite different from our usual monkey's fist impact tool. And to be honest as well, this is a display piece for me. I might swing it around at home for fun, but that's the extent of the usage. Hope you all enjoyed this video and we'll try it out. And last but not least, thank you again, Established Titles for sponsoring this video.